inappropriately named. It's called God Chasers. The reality is God chasing you. You think you're chasing him, but God's chasing you. you. Can I tell you? He wants you to just surrender and just be a part of what he's doing. You got anything? Uh, we uh, appreciate uh, you being a part of all that we're sharing, especially this time of year. It's a blessing just to be a Christian. And I praise God for that. And uh, Miss Francis has asked if she could just share something this morning, testimony, and I'm not sure, and I'll just bring it to you. How about that? I'm not so sure it's a testimony, but I'm sure it's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Like What's that mean? How he was so blessed. And you know, um, I have a deep faith that God's really taking care of me even though I get sick sometimes and I'm not able to go or do. But I will say that love, the love for me has come through this church. And the angels are not invisible that comes from this church, that God's using them to give me miracles. And God has used several of them. And I just want to tell you that God's in the habits of using people to do miracles too. Amen. And he has overloaded me with some strengths, like in food, clothing, and just everything. Comfort and your love. It means so much to me. And I thank you so much. And I also thank the people that cooks lunch for us sometimes on Amen. Weekends. Cause it's so good. And I thank them. They're good cooks, and I thank them. Thank you so much, everyone. Amen. Thank you, Francis. Angel means messenger. You're a messenger from God. You are an angel. That's what I said. I praise God for that. We're, we're glad to have Miss Jane with us today. She's, she's, she's actually here with bells on. Okay, yeah, she's here with bells on. She got her bells today. Appreciate that. Appreciate uh, Charlie and Rochelle bringing her, and uh, we appreciate any time that she can be here. I always appreciate my grandkids where they're here with us. Uh, like I said, Caitlin would have probably preached for you this morning, but uh, she's quarantined, so uh, that may be a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. We'll, I don't know. The gal has nine The passage of scripture. Uh, well, what do you own? You ought to know that. Uh, we're on the gifts and ministry of the Holy Spirit, and uh, we've been on that for the last couple of Sundays, and we will continue uh, till I'm through with that. Also, today, uh, by the way, uh, I need somebody to do that. Where's my helper? Where's Joe Game somewhere in a far distant galaxy. Would you hand that to everyone, to every person in here? Thank you. We are taking communion for those online today. We're taking communion at the end. People said, "Why?" I had them this morning. Said, "My goodness, we just had it last week in the week." I said, "I know we're going to have it till the end of the year." Okay. I said, "I'm going to make Episcopalians or Catholics out of you. One of the two. So we'll just keep working on it till we get it in the whole deal." But no, we're going to do this. We're And I want to talk to you this morning. I don't have a PowerPoint, uh, but I want to talk to you from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. By the way, I'm just going to put in some advertising for the next. Uh, next time, I'm going to be actually be starting in the. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to introduce today one of the gifts uh, of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to start into it next week. And I, I encourage you to come. I encourage you to bring some folks. And I encourage you people online to really look. Hey, Dot, so I got the microphone. That you've never heard before, and in some ways that you've never heard it before. Uh, so many times we think 
Uh, well, to be, you know, have these gifts of the Holy Spirit, you got to be a super spiritual person. That's not true. These gifts are for the common good of the common people. It's for all of us. And you are a gift of the Holy Spirit. I'll take one just. That spiritual realities. Are you overwhelmed? Know,
bride without spot or wrinkle or blemish. You know, uh, he goes to a foreign country, or he goes to the foreign country. He finds a father's house. It's a miracle. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. And he gets a bride. What, what's the bride's name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Would you happen to know what it means? Beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Can I tell you? God says you're beautiful. I don't think I'm very handsome. Well, it don't matter what you think. He thinks you're the most beautiful thing that's ever existed. You're the only one. That's what Rebecca means. And God sent him after the bride of Christ. All of this is a picture. Elazar. You know what Elazar's name means? It means helper and comforter. <coughs> what? He's the, got the name that Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. He's our helper. He's the one that comforts us. And Jesus said, what? He is, Elazar is a picture of that. Elazar is a picture of the Holy Spirit as he goes for the bride of Christ. Folks, I want you to know that in our time and in, 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 in where we live, we've got into religion when God wants us to go into relationship. God has called us to be what? Husband and wife with him. My wife has got a whole caravan that she's leading out. You're going to talk about a caravan in just a second. I want you to know right now, God cares about you because God knows you. You were chosen. You know, people say, well, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to come to God one day. No, you're not. See, God chose you before the foundation of the world and he chose you to be in his family and a part of what he's doing in the world that you live in. You're not born by accident and living in 2022. You were born by design and God sent you here. Why? Because he's placed special types of gifts that he's given you inside of you to, to bring forth what is needed for this generation. God loves you that much. God believes in you that much. He believes that you are the beautiful one, the bride of Christ. In this uh, story and in this picture that we see, I want you to see some things and uh, well, let me let me come back or I'm going to be way out of my where I'm going with this thing. And I want you to see that Abraham is representing the Father, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit is represented, represented by who? Elazar, the chief servant that he's sending out for the bride. And of course, the son, Isaac, represents the Lord Jesus Christ. The chief servant was dispatched. He was the chief servant, I've told you before. We told you what he was dispatched for and what he was to do. And this chief servant represents the Holy Spirit going after the bride of Christ. And I, I want you to know something right now. He doesn't go by him, he doesn't go uh, without anything. The Bible says that he, I, I got scripture. I'm not going to read scripture. Let me, in, in the just chapter 24, let me just tell you the story. He, he, first of all, he goes and he gets instructions from the father and he goes out and he gets a caravan together. Now, now listen, it's, it's hard for us to imagine this. So try to, try to put it in modern perspective, okay? He went out and got 10 camels. Camels were they were there in the Middle East, but they were for rich people, okay? And he got 10 of them. Why? Because Abraham is a famous, richest man of his day. He got 10 camels. And listen to me, he put the, or this, he put the best of Abraham's stuff on his camels. And he took them to a foreign land to look for a family member that would become the bride of Christ. Why? He's impressing folks. Can I tell you, when God comes with gifts, they're not gifts to be. He's always depending on the Father. He's always <coughs> depending on Abraham. And he said, he says a simple prayer, and he says, uh, uh, God, the father of, uh, of, of Abraham, he said, I, I've been sent on this trip, and you have to help me because it's an impossible. With this town, I don't know who's a relative and who's not a relative, so here's what I'm putting out to you. I'm saying to you, Father, your angel has brought me here and I believe right now that the first person that I meet that will give me water is that person that's to be the bride. Lo and behold, here comes Rebecca. And Rebecca's coming to water the, well, to, to, to get water for the people in the middle of the day. Does it remind you of a picture? Yeah. 
In, in, in the book of Gen, uh, John chapter 4, there's a woman who comes to a well in the middle of the day. And, and, and guess what? There's a servant of God there that says, would you give me a drink of water? Wow. The pictures that God gives us. And this bride, this part of the bride of Christ, gives Jesus water, but he gives her water, the water, a living water has been given to her. So here comes Rebecca. Rebecca, I can see her just coming. She's youthful. And she will bounce it down and she comes in and she sees this guy. Now listen, put the natural with the supernatural. We just say, ooh, and God's working. No, 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 that's not the way. God works in everyday life. Sometimes we miss him because we're not looking for him in everyday situations. She comes down here, and I want you to think about this just a minute. What if Donald Trump said, you know, my daughter's getting wishy, by the way. Well, his granddaughter got married. What his daughter? Well, anyway, somebody from his family got married. He gave her away and whatever. But can you imagine Donald Trump, this billionaire, and he's going to have a, and, and, but here it is. He said, I want you to find me a wife for my son. And I'm going, I, I, I'm going to give you what? I'm going to give you about 10 Bentleys, real shined up, and you're going to have a parade. You're going to come into the city, and you're going to be looking for the right wife. Can I tell you that draw, that draw a crowd? He already had a crowd. They just coming to see. They said, "Hey, did you hurt?" There's a guy down there at the well. He's got all these camels, and every camel is is just stuff that that they're carrying. Oh, gold and silver and all this great stuff we ain't never seen before. Like we got to go down there and see him. So Rebecca was one of them. But see, Rebecca didn't just look. There's a lot of people who just look. You can't look and find God. You got to do something. You got to respond to what He's doing. And Rebecca went up. I just see her. Can you just see her? Hey, 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 brother. I know you got all these camels. Can, can I bring you some water and can I get some water for your camels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to know something. God's looking for servants. Yes, yeah. Oh, I'm just looking. I'm looking for the right church. I can have a, a youth group and my children and now I can take care of this and I can go and just enjoy the worship. And God's looking for servants. Yes, yeah. Amen. Amen. You didn't get saved to sit. Mm -hmm. You got saved to serve. Yeah. God's looking for servants. Yes. And if she does all that, he's watching. Oh, the Spirit's watching you. He said if you'll respond to him, and when you respond to him, he's got something for you. He's got gifts. Yes. Oh, I like this. And he calls her over. And he said, honey, come here. I got something for you. And now, this doesn't mean very much to us. Probably means obviously, whatever. He said, give her another friend. And what? Bracelets. Now, listen to me. He's already carried the best. He's given the best. If you think he gave her some trinkets, you done messed up because he gave her more than trinkets. I hear people talk sometimes, and I, I don't like what I hear from people sometimes, as they say, you, I don't like that gift. I don't want no tongues. I don't want to prophesy. I don't want listen to me. Ever give God's God is rich. Amen. Yes, it is. I want it. There's no bad gifts you can get from him. He gives the very best because he's got the very best. <laughs> He owns it all. I'm going to tell you, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither in entered the heart of man the things he has for those that love him. That's what Paul tells us in Corinthians. I want you to realize God's got some great stuff for you. You know why? Because he wants you to shine. You're not a pauper. You're a king's kid. You belong to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So she gets it. Again, I want you to stay in the natural and stay in the spiritual. God's showing us some things and he's working in the supernatural, but he's working out in the natural, okay? I want to tell you, listen to me, God has given us something in our age to draw people to God. Yes. Yes. And it has to be supernatural. Can I tell you? They don't like our philosophy. They, they don't like our meetings. They don't like our programs. If we're going to touch this generation, it's going to have to be by the power of the gifts of God that they see and they say, nobody else but you could have done that. Amen. Amen. That has to be God. I'm going to tell you, God's doing there are some things in our day that only He can do. I'm going to share something at the end that I believe God has spoken. And let's just see it come to pass, okay? Let's just see what happens with it. But I want you to see this. And what is her first response? 
Put that nose ring in, put them beautiful bracelets on gold and all that, and gold out here. Can you see it? She just went out playing that morning to go get water, and she comes back with gold everywhere. I, I mean, I mean, she got them down her arm, did gold everywhere, and gold in her nose. That can't be. And she comes in. Can you see her? She's letting everybody see her gold. And her mama says, Where do you get that? And her brother, now listen, Laban shows up. It's the first time we see him, but he's all, he, he's in the scripture. Laban is a greedy guy. Listen to me. Some people in the world are going to be got, drawn in by greed, and that's okay. Let them be drawn in. Let them, uh, God says that what? They're going to envy you because of the giftings of God that's inside of you. And remember, those giftings come, cover a whole thing. It can cover your prosperity, cover your, uh, uh, your health. It can cover your children and grandchildren. I'm going to tell you right now. I want people jealous of me. I have people right now that come in. Well, my kids is a mess. How did you get such good kids? I'll tell you, it wasn't me, it wasn't Jackie, it was Jesus. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that's what God had called us to. Those are gifts from God. I'm going to tell you, the greatest treasure that I have are some of those that just left right now. They're gifts from God. And they shine not because they're in the world. They shine because they're God's. You've got the same thing. Look for them to shine. And she goes home and Laban, her brother, looks at he, He's this guy that's greedy. You'll find him later on with Jacob. He tries to steal everything Jacob's got. He's trying to steal everything and get because he wants to be rich. And he sees all these riches. And sisters are showing all this stuff off. And he, wait a minute, sis. Where'd you get that stuff? Oh, that this guy that's down in, in the square by the well, and he's got 10 tractor loads full of this stuff. Yes, man. Put it in perspective. He got 10 tractor loads of this stuff. It's just everywhere. Can you see the dollar signs coming? He said, Sis, where's he at? Well, I left him in case. You what? Let's go. And so he run, Laban runs back. Not, not Laban. Raven, Laban runs back. Why? He's interested in the money. He's interested in the prosperity. Whatever it takes to take them. The world's looking to see something besides what they've got. Okay? And, and, and he comes running and, and he says, come on, stay home with us. So anyway, short, short story. She, he goes home with her and he tells the story. He said, uh, my, 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 uh, my master is one of the richest men that's ever lived. He's got all these riches, and he's got, now listen, y'all thinking in the natural? Come on, think natural now. He's got one son, and my master is old. What does that say? This man fixed to die. He fixed to leave his son everything he's got, and Laban is listening to all this stuff, and he said, I want to be in that family because I want to get some of that stuff. Are you listening to me? It's natural. You ought to be making people jealous. I hear people all the time, well, Christians ought not to have no money. They ought to be poor. Who said that? You don't find that in the Bible. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to go in this prosperity thing and everything's about prosperity, how much money. That's not the end at all. But you know what? The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy that God gives wealth without sorrow. Amen. Yes, it does. A lot of people get wealth and they got a bunch of sorrow to go along with it. The whole family falls apart. Their whole life falls apart. Their marriage falls apart. And God says, when the wealth comes from me, hmm, he said, there'll be no sorrow with it. And so that's what he was seeing. That's what he's doing. And he brings them home. And, 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 and Elazar, the, the uh, servant, starts telling the story. And he says, I want y'all to know this is a miracle. Are you listening to me? There are miracles happening around us all the time. And we miss them. Oh, that's not it. It is. It's a miracle. If you'll look for miracles, I guarantee you find them. And if you'll look for them and you find them, there'll be a lot more of them. You know why? Because God likes to bless people who are what? Who love the blessing. Who are thankful for the blessing. They come in all different ways. And so he's telling the story. He said, my master's very rich. And he sent me over here, and, and then he starts giving gifts to everybody. Now, Laban really likes it. He starts giving gifts to everybody that's there. Well, that's nice. And then he said, I've come for a bride. And before, before Rebecca came, before beauty came, I prayed a prayer. 
and say, God, I've come on your journey. I don't know what to do. I'm right here. Have you ever been there before? Listen, when you don't know what to do or where to go, that's a good place for a miracle. Yes, it is. Just believe God for a miracle. He said, a miracle came. Rebecca came. And she would think about that of the whole city. Who would have ever thought that he would be put in the path of one of the nieces of Abraham's brother? I mean, one of the children of Abraham's brother. That odds are just impossible. But no, God, he had this thing planned out. And he said, I said, Lord, if she comes and she serves and gives me a drink of water, then she's the one. Not only does it come and give her him a drink of water, she gives all the camels. The camels can drink up to 40 gallons. Give up 10 gallons, I mean, uh, 10 uh, camels, all the water that they want. And then she goes out, she's a true servant. And she said, I believe this is a God thing. And the family's listening and said, and I, I can see later, he's right at home. Yeah, that has to be God. <laughs> hey yeah hey sis marry this one don't let him get away you know deal. Said, well yeah I believe she's called I believe this is the thing of God will send her and just like the world listen to me the world will always try to hold you back they waited another couple of days what, because why they didn't want to oh don't let her sister go in been able to say goodbye and all this excuse after excuse after excuse and finally the, the Elazar said look I've got to return. This is urgent. I've got to get back now. Either she goes or she don't go. And I just say, Get her out of this house. Help her along the way. And she leaves. And heads back. This all, one whole chapter covers this 24 long chapter. And I'll do So she's headed back. Now listen, he gives gifts to the family as they listen. You're here to be a gift to other people, yes, yes. And especially people in the world, because exactly. they don't have no Jesus. Yes. So give your Jesus away, okay? And I'll live, especially at Christmas time. Yes. Have a smile on your face. Yes. Have a little mercy inside you. Yes. Oh, they didn't wait on me right then. Shut up. Yes. Give them some joy. <clears throat> it's supposed to be a season of joy. Yes. And she heads back, but listen, she can go by herself. She had her served maidens that went along with her. It says maidens, so there's at least two. I believe there's, what, four, five, six of them, okay? This was a good family, too. And a servant was a person that, more than likely, they gave them servants that were their age. They, they were. Many of them were their age that they had companions to go along with them and whatever. And uh, you women know all about that. Y'all can't even go to the bathroom by yourself. <laughs> and when y'all get together in a group, y'all giggling all the time. It's just crazy stuff. And so you got a bunch of these giggling girls, all on camels, coming in, riding in, and here comes what? Here comes Isaac out of the field. That's all in the chapter. Isaac comes out of the field. What is he doing? He's been out in the field by himself because he's been meditating. He has been he's been standing before God. <coughs> See, he's taking the mantle of his father, Abraham. He is the holder of the spirit. I got to put this in there. Listen, man. Don't think just because you're a Christian, you've got to have an ugly girl. <laughs> you know, God... <laughs> God, God, God really likes you. And, and women, don't, don't you think that God likes you and he's got to have some guy with money somewhere around here? As my mother-in-law, you, you say, you can marry just as easy for money as you can love. That, that's my mother-in-law. That ain't mine. Okay, no. She didn't, I, can I tell you, my wife didn't get to, she got the love, but she didn't get the money. Okay, no deal. With, with that, but that's what's happening here. And all these girls are giggling and they're riding on these uh, 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 camels coming in and uh, here comes Isaac out of the field. And Isaac looks and listen to me, the first person, the Bible says the first person he saw was who? Rebecca. Now, 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 come on, come on, stay with me just a minute. Doesn't say he was, you, you know, I want you to get this. The Holy Spirit is there to introduce them. 
But how did he recognize which one? Because you've got a whole group of women around you. It's the one that's wearing the gifts. Can I tell you, God gives gifts us so we can be recognized. Not only by the world, but by God himself. Don't, don't look at them. Now, don't you dare. You've been here long enough. I can hear some thoughts coming. I just don't have no gifts. I don't want to hear that and I'll slap you. Come on, tell me. I'm a nice guy, but I will. You know why? Because you're saying, God, you're alive. Because God's word says you have at least two gifts. So look around and say, I don't have no gifts. Yes, you do. If you don't have no gifts, that means you don't belong to him. You have the gift of the Holy Spirit that brought all the gifts. But not only that, he gives you particular special ones. And I'm going to be talking about that in the next few weeks. And I want you to realize that you really got them. And I want to tell you something, you'll be able to recognize them. And not only that, you'll be excited about using them. Can you just, oh, you know, I got this from, I, I got this from Donald Trump's son or whatever, and I'm, but I'm hiding it. I'm going to put it back in, I ain't going to hide I'm going to, you'll be flashing that thing everywhere. Come on now. I want you to realize right now, the gifts are given so we can shine, so the world can see it. That's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. And all the giftings are in there. It's a part of the signs. I want you to realize right now that you've been created to shine because what? You're his witnesses, his testimony. That's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 1. It says, I'll make you what? My witnesses, my testimonies. Everywhere you go, you'll be my testimony of the greatness of what God has done in you. It's the gifts of God. You're special. You're supposed to be special. God laid you out and minister to you and before the foundation of the world. He gave you gifts and those gifts were to be activated. What? When the Holy Spirit came and found you. Listen, they, I got all this uh, different people and different things and the way they think and whatever. And they say, well, you know, only uh, uh, people that are baptized in the Holy Spirit have gifts. That is not true. I've seen Baptists and Methodists that don't even believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit who have the gifts of God that operate in their lives. They really do. It's the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. Uh, I was trying to think of his name. Uh, he was a Baptist preacher right over the hill. I want to tell you, uh, I, I, I just honored him. Uh, I didn't get to go and know him real well, but I did get to know him. And uh, I can't pull up his name, but anyway, at Fairfield Highlands Baptist Church over there. And uh, I, I remember a, a first funeral that I, I was a young guy and I went to a funeral and whatever, and it was one of his members. And I will tell you, I, I was all struck. This guy just oozed with the love of God. He pulled out, this member was a, a member of his choir. He pulled out the chair and he sat it here and he started telling about what God had done through this man in this man's life and how witness he went. And he says, that chair is missing up there. And he needs you. I'm thinking, oh, wow, what a message in that whole thing. But again, he just oozed with love. And it wasn't just for that funeral. I found out as I got around him, it was everybody and everything that he did. And I had one of these crazy charismatic come to me. She said, I'm going to see Brother so I'm glad I'm glad he called his name. I'm going to see Brother So and I said, Why are you going to say the Duke? Ah! Yeah, it is. Brother Duke. Brother Duke. And he said, she said, I'm going to see Brother. That's what you want to see Brother Duke for. Uh, he's not baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to go get him baptized in the Holy Spirit. I said, Lady, you don't need to get him baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need to get what's on him. He's on you. Are you listening to me? These gifts are out there, they're a part of us. Recognizing them, I tell you what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does, it enhances them and empowers them. Doesn't give you, but it enhances and empowers. Why? Because these gifts are a gift from God to his bride. And when you became the bride of Christ, you became a part of that. The relationship that God has with you. And so she's recognized by these giftings. And guess what? Isaac is awestruck over her. And she is awestruck over Isaac. You know what? God's called us to fall in love with him. And after we fall in love with him, even though we enjoy his gifts, they're not the most important thing. They're only reminders of the one we love and how much he loves us. He gave us a gift. 
I want you to know that those gifts are available to you. Let me wind down because I want to do this and we're going to do something as we close today other than have communion, as we have communion, we're going to do these. I want to just, just highlight, just, just, just touch on it. I ain't going to preach. Just want to highlight. I want you to see it, okay? First of all, what are the lessons? Answer the Holy Spirit when he calls. That was our calling. Rebecca didn't have to answer. It was her choice. Everybody has choices. Yes. Let me tell you something. Exactly. Every one of us are called. Yes. But you know what? The calling continues. Yes. Really? It does. It's, people say, I got saved. I'm sitting down. I got baptized of the Holy Spirit. I'm, no, you're not. I'm 72 years old. The Lord's speaking to me this morning. He says, you know, I got a new challenge for you and I got a new calling in the area of your life. Yes. Said, oh, God, wait a minute. I'm 72, so I don't care. Oh, God. He said, I told you, I don't want to hear that no more. Let, let me tell you, as you go to Jesus, you're always having a new calling. There's always something new in your life. And with that new call comes new giftings. Yes. And your love. Amen. And your strength in your relationship. Yes. Respond to the Holy Spirit. Yes. The second thing, come to Him to serve. Come to do what to serve? The greatest job in the world is to serve God. <laughs> now, I know y'all don't do this. Let me just tell them what to me. Do you ever get to the point in your life sometimes and all ministry came, starts coming in on you and all these other things and you feel like, man, I just can't get caught up in that whole thing? And I know y'all don't do that. You don't start grumbling. I, you know, had that. I had this week and heard the Lord say, you don't like what you hear? I had changed my tune. I said, God, you know what? I just enjoy serving you. Yes. Whatever you call me, then I, I enjoy doing it. I just enjoy serving you. Yes. You know, God's looking for servants. You're never going to move in the gifts of the Spirit if you got a laboring spirit and just want the riches. Oh, look at me. Look what I got. This is not about that. Because most of the time, those who are true servants of God are ignored. They really are. But that's all right. You know why? Because we're not here for them. We're here for Him. And He loves what you do. Apostle Paul reminds us whatever you do in word and then do all for the glory of God. Who are you doing it for? And keep doing it. The third thing, have faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She had faith. This girl never left home. This girl didn't know where she was going. She just knew this is a rich guy, whatever. She just didn't know where she's going. And it's a miraculous thing. I, listen, think about this. A guy coming in off the street, got all this money and whatever, and here I am going. I never met this guy before. I don't know if he's going to be a wife abuser. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know anything about him. Yet I'm on my way on a journey. That takes faith. Can I tell you, this life of being a Christian takes faith. I want to know everything. I want to have it all together. Show me this and show me that. I'm going to tell you, you're never going to get that with God. Because always it's going to be a walk of faith. I'm asking you to do this. Then I'll do that. I'm asking you to go there. And then I'll send you there. I want you to realize right now it's a walk with God and it's a walk of faith. Listen to me. Faith is not an intellectual understanding. There's a lot of people. I'm talking to folks online too. There's a lot of people who have an intellectual what? Faith in God. Oh, I believe there's a God. I believe there's a Jesus. He died on the cross. Well, okay. How's it changed your life? If you really have faith, that's what James says. James says, I want to show, uh, show me faith. Oh, well, I'm just saying it. No, no. James says, show it to me. Can I tell you, when people really have faith, I look at people sometimes. Listen, I, I got questions. I worry. I'm concerned about some folks. Well, I'm a Christian. They never go to church. They have no hunger for God. They have no hunger for the things of God. They just don't care about God. But I'm saved. I got my ticket punch. Can I tell you something? There has to be some fruit that flows out of this thing. And when, that, when the Holy Spirit comes, I have faith that he's going to produce his life in me. 
Can I tell you, he's done far more than I thought he could do with this old boy. That'd be a good place to say amen. amen. <laughs> it is, it's true. I look at it all the time. I tell you, I, 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 when the gifts of the Spirit start flowing, I'm giving prophetic words. I'm not a prophet, I'm a son of a prophet, but I give prophetic words before and, and just blow people away. How'd you go know there? I don't. I wish I was that smart, but I'm not. And I realize, just like they realize, it's not me, it's the God in me. And my thing is, I just have to have faith that when I speak, God's going to speak through me. Yes. I have to have faith that when I give, God's going to give through me. Are you listening to me? God says, I want and looking for a bride that has faith in me and my abilities and what I can do in you and through you. It always goes for, for, through the measure of faith. Remember, Romans 1, people say, well, I don't have that great faith. Listen, use what you got. God never tells you to use what you don't have. Use, oh, well, if I had kind of talk with faith, I'd be great. No, no, no. God says, I want you to use rich faith. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because I've been given a measure of faith. Romans chapter 12, verse 7. Every man is given a measure of faith. All of us have a measure. Just use the measure you got. And you know what God says? As you measure out, he says, it'll be multiplied to you. But you got to measure it out. Use the faith you have. The, the, the fourth thing that we have in this story. We have to receive the gifts and willing to be led and work with these gifts. We got to receive the gifts and be willing to be led and work with the gifts. See, these all these gifts were gifts of leading. What? Nose ring. You know what nose ring was used for? It was used for ornament, but it's also used for slaves and they put a chain to it so they carry it with a nose ring. Are you missing that? Yes. We're to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit where he goes. And not only that, places. And again, it wasn't just one or two. Going, you, you see these look pictures? They go all up the arm, especially if you're rich. You've got a lot of, uh, of that gold that's all the way on you, and they go all up. Well, they speak of what we do, our hands. You can be led by the Holy Spirit on your direction and what you do for God. Yes. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit that these gifts are calling you to and ministering through <laughs> you. And last of all, you got to be a part of the body the body of Christ, the community of God. Are you listening to me? On, online, are you listening to me here? Oh, you know, I, I, I can worship God just as easy at home as I can in church. Really? <coughs> okay, can't you see Rebecca? Oh, these are nice things. Oh, just send old Isaac over and we'll get married. And after we get married, I'll come back and live here. I got a good life here. No. You got to leave where you were, your family, your home, and you got to come into his family yes, and his home. Yes, See, this is a God community that's coming down out of heaven. Revelation chapter 21 and 22. This is a God thing. God's calling his body together. This is the body of Christ. I'm going to say something about that in just a second. Okay. Last part. I will lead in now. And I will lead in to our giftings. And those giftings that are dangling on you. <coughs> the Bible says that, uh, that the bride is a city. In Isaiah chapter 60, it says that that bride is one that comes with uh, her children <coughs> dangling on her knees and on her arms. I want you to get this to me. God's stuff <coughs> comes dangling on us. Why? Because he wants us to rise, shine. Not, not just with the gifting that he's given us. Hear this. I, I know that, that I, I don't care. I, I, I <coughs> far too much about my kids and my grandkids. I don't care. You're here. You have to listen. <laughs> I, I, had, I was talking to Charlie about his grandson. I, I, I hope mine will stay like that. He's in his <coughs> high school and still close to his granddaddy, and I, I'll always. But, I, you know, Joe is a, no, he's a snuggler. He likes to snuggle up, and I get in bed, and in the morning, I woke up this morning, and I snuggle up to him, and I told him, and I said, God, I'm blessing this boy. I'm putting gifts in him, Lord. I say, he'll nothing, do nothing but serve you the rest of your life. 
son in the Holy Ghost. He will be far greater than his grandfather ever thought about being. He will carry the gifts of God to the yes. world around him. I say that for him. I say it for my granddaughters. I say it for them. <coughs> Why? Because they're the giftings that are dangling on me. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to outlive the calling of God on my life. Because my calling is going to be passed down from generation to generation to generation. It's not going to stop here. It's going to keep going. And I want you to know right now, God says, I want their gifts so they'll shine for me. They'll draw the world in. Oh, God, the world has not seen the things that are yet to come with God's giftings. And here it is. I'm, I'm close now. This is it. I'm going to, I'm going to read this and we're going to have communion, okay? This is something I wrote down. We're, this is going to lead us into the first gift. The first gift, people say, which is greatest? They're not, he, he won't name a great one. He said, love is greatest. But he leads off. I, I, listen, if you lead off with something, I, I'm thinking it's your best. You know what he leads off with? Wisdom. You know what our world needs more than anything right now? Wisdom. <laughs> Have you ever seen such dummies in all your life? You know why? They got intellectual degrees, but they have no wisdom. For wisdom, true wisdom, only comes from God. God says he will give exceptional gifts of wisdom. Let me read this. In our day and in every day, we need the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. The world needs more than what men have. They need what only God can provide. Only God can get us out of the mess we find ourselves in. We are beyond the help of man's logic and his ability. We need the wisdom of God and the power of God. Maybe it's why we saw what we did happen in our election. Now, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I don't care. We're, we're, we're bringing down tech giants anyway. This is a good time to bring them down. Yeah. And I'll be able to. I, I don't know about you, but listen to me. I don't care what, what side you, it doesn't really make any difference to me. Can I tell you? They some heathen Republicans too. Okay, I ain't saying that. Yes. They demonize. Okay, I don't believe. But it seems more on one side than on the other. And I'm complaining to God. I, you know, deep intercession. Lord, I just don't understand this. Now, I was expecting a red move of God in the blood, right? But I'm also, in the back of my head, I'm, I'm expecting a red wave. It's going to change everything politically. We didn't get that. We got a park, but we didn't get anything like I was praying for, and I don't think like you were praying for. And so I'm complaining. God starts talking. He says, son, would you rather have it your way or my way? If I gave you what y'all were asking for, he said, a man would get credit for it. But if you'll watch and see the way I do it, there ain't no man going to get credit for it. It ain't because of Republicans or Democrats. It's because of the move of God. And can I tell you, every prophet is saying it. I believe it, and that's why we're having communion with Doug Sheets and his brother and all those who run around with him. I believe what the prophets have said, that before the end of this year, God's going to bring a red wave that's going to change and transform everywhere, and I'm just looking for it. I'm just standing back like a backlog and say, let's see what God does. And I'm waiting to see what God does. And God's doing great and marvelous things. I want to tell you, if you've been watching the news, you need to be watching what's going on. Don't just be downhearted and say, oh, things are bad and things are happening. I'm going to tell you, things are happening. Yes. They're popping. And can I tell you, I, uh, Tim Sheets says this, and I'm going along with his prophet. He said, before the end of the year, you're going to see the dominoes fall. Yes. And you know what I'm saying? All time. Lord, let the dominoes fall. Let the dominoes fall. Let the dominoes fall. Why? Because I want the move of God. I don't want the move of man. I want the move of God. And God's going to bring something that will change and transform this nation. It won't be by our doing. It'll be by His doing. And that's exactly what's happening with that. The wisdom of God. You know... I believe one of the greatest things, as I've said before, go ahead and get your uh, communion started here. Open up the top. Take the plastic off the top first. A little plastic shield. We're going to make one that's going to be something <coughs> one of these days. And then the second part you can pull 
That's a little harder to pull. You gotta really pull on that thing. Push it down, and then pull it up. And it's supposed to open. Come on now, you're, you're doing good. Don't spill it all over you. Here it comes. There you go. Oh, praise God, a miracle. You know, but anyway, the wine, uh, get your wine going here. That won't be able to it. In it. Judge Sheets is having communion every day, all the way to the end of the year. We're going to have every time we meet together, and we will have communion the first time of the year. Do you need help, Francis? Yeah, I got oh, you got it. Okay. Anybody need help? Get your neighbor. <laughs> they may be more technical than you. And that, that's okay. But Dutch was talking about it. at the end of the year, he had a dream. And in that dream that was given to him, he said the end of the last quarter of this year is a baseball game, and the baseball player would get up and it was changed. To, I'm, not, I'm making it short, and that baseball bat would hit the hit the baseball, hit the baseball, and would knock it into the throat of the enemy, and it would silence the enemy. There's a whole lot of people that's making a whole lot of brags and junk, but they're about to be silenced. Who by God? God silenced. And how is he doing it? Through the covenant. If the bat was taken out of a covenant box. I want to tell you, out of this covenant, this is the new covenant in my blood. Out of this covenant was taken the gift of God that will change everything. Everything we need is represented right here. Are you listening to me? I, I, I'm fixing to get into it. This right here, look at it just a minute. The bread represents the body of Christ. The bread. You know what? Bread is physical. It can be seen. Are you listening to me? God has a body out there. It's called His church. It can be seen. And we are the body of Christ. And as we take that this morning, we need to realize that we belong to Him. We don't belong to ourselves. Our body is not our own. It belongs to Him. We are what? The vessel of the Holy Spirit. We have been given a gift from God. And God said, Jesus said, this is my body. It's broken for you. It's time we were broken for the world. Realize we're a part of His body. Would you right now take that body and receive that body of fresh and anew and say, I'm going to be a part of this body because I am a part of it. I receive the physical part in Jesus' name. Wine represents the spirit part. The wine of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus stood and He said, this is the, this is the new wine in my blood. My what? My blood. Listen to me. It is we were studying this last week communion in, in school. I don't know why all of us come together. We're doing that. They was telling about all the fathers and all that, but I'm not going to get into that. But hear this right now. Communion's more than just a little wafer or a little wine. It's a promise. A promise if you will remember. I'll do it again. That's what the Jews believed. When they were in Egypt. And they had the Passover supper. That's what this was. They had the Passover supper. They were about to leave Egypt and they didn't realize it, but they're going to red, place the Red Sea and the enemy would be seen no more. Why? Because it would be drowned in the Red Sea. Jesus about to go to the cross. And the blood of Jesus was about to drown every demon that has ever existed. Why? Because God says it's a part of your new covenant. God said, would you receive the wine? The new wine of the Holy Spirit. Would you receive that right now? In the dream, the bat that would do the damage was taken out of the communion box, but it had these two words on it. Wisdom and revelation. Can I tell you? God has given wisdom and revelation to our church, the churches like never before, and they will shut the mouth of the enemy because right now this country and this world will be awed by what God is doing in us and through us, and the voice of God will silence the enemy. Yes. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the covenant meal that we have just had. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the work of the ministry of the Holy Spirit inside of every one of us. Stir up the gifts of God in us. God, may we see not what man can do, but what God can do. Oh, God, we've made ourselves available. We make ourselves available right now. We are the body of Christ. Lord, shine on us. Shine on us. 
Let the gifts be seen in us like never before. And Lord, as we close out today, we close out today. I'm asking everyone that's watching, I want you to take your hand and put it on your heart. Take your hand and put it on your heart. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I stir up the gift of God in every person here. And Father, this world will know there's a real God and He has real gifts, real power. Father, I thank You, Lord, for releasing it in our lives, our homes, our cities, and our nation in the world that we live in. God, I praise You, Lord, for what You're doing in Open Door Church and what You're doing in the world that we live in today. We bless it. And Lord, we say, by the end of the year, we'll see the results of this communion, this body, and this blood. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. I'm going to be talking about wisdom next week. And you're going to hear some things and some, I may be getting to another gift. So you just stop, be a part of that and invite some folks to come with you. Tell people about Jesus. This is the season for the reason. And he is the reason, Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you making some book folks. God bless you. And goodbye. Every breath that I take, every moment I live.